Hello, Sam from Sound on Sound magazine here. We're at Superbooth in Berlin. I'm with Colin from Thingstone. How are you doing, Colin? Good, thank you. So Thingstone is a new name to me, and your Track 8 is a new product to me. Absolutely, yeah. Um, this is an interesting thing. It's not a synthesizer. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a, a multi-track recorder. Uh, basically, yeah. So it's like an 8-track audio and MIDI arranger. So it's intended for songwriters to get started quickly, uh, because I always have the issue with uh, DAWs that uh, I get lost in the DAW itself and I lose like my creative ideas and so on. So wa I wanted to build something really simple to yeah, get your ideas down and keep in the process of making music. So it's got quite a, a retro visual aesthetic to it. Is it Absolutely. designed to hark back to the golden age of the 8-track cassette recorder, that kind of thing? Kind of. Uh, so I tried out uh, different devices. I uh, tried out like roof boxes and loopers, and they always kept me like in this uh, loop concept. And I, well, I was feeling like limited in loops. And then I looked back to these eight tracks or four tracks cassette recorders, and I thought this was a really simple and easy to use concept. So I thought with now digital technology, why not replicate the same thing uh, for digital age here? Yeah. But obviously it isn't a cassette multi-track, so you do have the luxury of things like a, a large display and waveform viewing. Exactly, and, and copy pasting, I can bounce in place, so I don't have to like rewind and bounce to one track manually and so on. I can all do this uh, digitally instantly. But in, you've implemented a lot of this functionality using physical buttons rather than touch screen or there's no way to connect a mouse or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I tried out stuff like iPads and so on, but I, with iPads and other touch screen devices, you can't really build like muscle memory. And that's something that's really important to me because I don't want to think about a device when I'm using it. I just want to think about my music. And yeah, the more I can do this without thinking about it, the better for me, exit. So are you seeing this as a sort of sketch pad that people would start their songs on and then transfer them to a DAW exactly, later? Exactly, exactly. In the end, you can export everything as stem files and then move it to your DAW. Before, because for me, uh, after, after I kept, uh, I've written down all my ideas, then I can work on a computer because as for me, it, it's not a creative process anymore to make something or produce it. But I, yeah, I just want to capture like the first, uh, the first phase of the songwriting process uh, and keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. So there's eight tracks of audio, eight tracks of MIDI. You have various different input options, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so there's uh, eight uh, audio stereo tracks and you have three different inputs, but you can only record one input at a time. Because at least for me, uh, I can only play like one instrument. So I thought, why bother with multiple inputs? Uh, you have uh, one stereo, uh, one mono, one microphone with preamp and fan power. And yeah, you can just select the input type, go to the tape you want, uh, the track you want to, and uh, arm the recording and then yeah, press record. That's basically it. Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and on the MIDI side of things, it's purely a MIDI recorder. It doesn't have any built-in sound capabilities. No, there's no sound in there. So you have, uh, yeah, you have you have two traditional MIDI in and outs. Uh, so one one in, one out. But you can connect up to 16 USB MIDI devices. Um, but you only have uh, eight MIDI tracks. So it keeps the same concept like on the other side. You have uh, an endless MIDI tape kind of thing. And then you can route the eight different tracks to your different MIDI channels and yeah, then control synthesizers. And if you want, you can route back the audio signal from the, uh, from the synthesizers and then record it to tape if you like to and then move it around from there. So what sort of ed MIDI editing facilities are there? I mean, uh, you can do the same uh, cut, copy, paste you can do with the audio. Uh, but there's also like a MIDI editing view where you can uh, either step record stuff into with uh, like usual functionality with grid and so on. Um, yeah, but you can also attach a keyboard to step recording via the keyboard or live recording um, and then edit individual notes if you like to. So you can change like if you select the note, you can change the velocity afterwards and so on. Oh, That's cool. it. I, I don't want to use the touch screen. There's a touch screen in there, but I always think, I think when using touch screen on like small devices like this, um, you get lost in the flow if you try to yeah, add notes with touch. So the only time when I use uh, the touch screen actually is uh, if I name something 
because it's much easier to use a touchscreen keyboard and use encoders to find the name for it, yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like a very kind of individual concept and a very, uh, quite a powerful one. I mean, I built it uh, for myself because I was always looking for something like this and I haven't found it. Uh, and my assumption is just that with so many people on the world, there may be other people that want exactly the same concept as well, yeah. So when will this be available to buy? Uh, probably it would take me another half a year or so to get like the FCC and C registration. And how uh, much do you think it's going to cost? So if I start with a small batch of like 100, I would have to charge like 1,500 euros for it. Interesting. Well, it's nice to see someone doing, doing something different <laughs> in this world. Thank and, you. Um, thank you. Yeah. Great to meet you, Colin. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thank you.